Hi, everyone. I'm Ronnie. And I'm Jessica. And you're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where we walk you through cleaning your house. Hey, guys. Good morning. So today we're going to talk about cleaning as we go and tying old habits to new habits. And we're going to do our regular refresh of the house. Uh, If you're new here, what we do is we walk you step by step through cleaning your house so you can listen while we while you guys clean up um, with us and hopefully you can get a lot done today. I know I have a lot to do today so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want you guys to do is get ready for the day in some capacity. You all that listen know the drill, light a candle, open a window, put your hair up in a bun and just kind of get ready for the day. It kind of just tells the brain that it's time to clean. And then once you're done getting ready, because if you started the podcast, you're probably already ready to clean. If not, then um, just do those things. Something I've added to my routine before I clean that I've talked about in a previous episode is I just like to go stand outside or walk around my driveway lately in the when do when I'm doing my um as we call them opening shifts my morning house reset after breakfast I just like to go stand outside kind of ground myself and let the sun hit my face and kind of wake me up and this heat definitely has been waking me up pro tip it also helps you to go ground yourself if when you go to your morning walk in the morning you have an Amazon package waiting for you That will help extra ground you. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But anyway, once you're done doing all that stuff, let's go ahead and get started on a load of laundry. I like to do a load before every cleaning session or just when I have some time or maybe I want to watch a show on TV or something. I like to, while I'm sitting there, feel productive and um, I'll fold a load of laundry and then put it away during the commercial uh, if there's an ad or at the end of an episode but let's go ahead and do a laundry switch get our machines running let's go move our stuff from the washer to the dryer and from the dryer to the laundry basket and we are going to get to that at the end of the episode I will remind you and if you don't want to do a lot of laundry today, maybe you're just not feeling it today, maybe just do a load of towels. That way we're getting something done and you don't have to fold uh, a huge load when um, we're done with our cleaning session. But that's something I talk about in every episode and that ties into today's theme of tying old habits, new habits to old habits. Um We, I like to watch, binge watch Netflix, but I'm trying not to do that as much because I'm not productive during the day. So I reward myself with Netflix shows if I'm going to be folding laundry and doing loads of laundry. So that's something I've done. Um, Every time I get the inkling to watch a show, I'll be like, okay, laundry time. And I kind of tie that habit to that habit. Okay, after we're done doing the laundry switch, let's move to the kitchen and start... Unloading our dishwasher or our drying rack. We're going to go ahead and get all of our machines running. That includes our dishwasher. I know not all of you use one. Some of you just use it as a drying rack, whatever the case may be. However your household is, let's just go ahead and put all of our clean dishes away if they're there. And then we're going to start on our pre-rinse. Um, and after you do take all of the clean dishes and put them away, do not forget to just do a little once go round of your one time go around of your house, just room to room and collect all the dishes. That way I worded that so weird. <laughs> anyway, um, that way you don't have kids or yourself finding dishes after you've already done the dishes. It's just something annoying. And um, to me, I hate that. So go throughout the house, get all the dishes together. If you have teenagers or kids in the house that can do that, um, you can tell them to do that. It's an easy, fun chore. And then something else I like to do before a session doing the dishes is check my refrigerator for any leftovers or anything that pots, pans, anything that I threw in the refrigerator that needs to be washed. 
And on that note, while you guys are doing that, something that I used to do that used to annoy myself that eventually I'm like, why am I doing this? And this may sound lazy because it was, I would put leftovers and stuff if it was in a smaller pan or something or um, pot, I would just put it in the fridge like that. And then I don't have a whole lot of pots and pans. So the next day I'd go to go cook and I'd be like, oh yeah, it's in the leftovers. So now I have to clean that. Why would, why would I do that to myself? It was so annoying. I get so mad at myself. It would just trigger me, but I did it every time. So I do not do that. And part of the problem was I didn't have containers to put stuff in. So I just invested in some good containers you know, they weren't that much. I just got some glass ones that were going to last me. And now I never do that because I know how mad it makes myself. So just be working on the dishes while I talk. I like to do cups first, cups and utensils, and then move on to bowls and plates and then up to the pans and the more dirty stuff. And tying your doing your dishes to an old habit I well let's say you're cooking a meal breakfast lunch dinner what have you uh, or just preparing a meal maybe you're not even cooking you're just heating something up while whatever is heating up while whatever is cooking simmering what have you do as much cleaning of the kitchen area because you have to keep an eye on it anyway in that amount of time and I know that seems like common sense and a lot of cleaning is common sense in a way but we still don't do it right and it's good to have a reminder every once in a while because you know I'm the one doing the podcast but I'm not some perfect cleaner by any means those of y'all that have watched my tiktoks know what my house looks like sometimes I get really behind and that's okay but that's why I'm working towards getting better and cleaning as I go and stuff like that but since I've been recording myself uh, cleaning and stuff I really noticed that it does not take that much time to do the dishes even when there's a huge disaster the time it takes me start to finish really is not that long and I make it out to be this big ordeal but it's really not it's really quick easy painless And once I start doing them, I always finish them because I just have trouble starting on the task. So I make it a rule where I have to start doing the dishes while something is simmering, while something's heating up, and then I end up finishing them anyway. And just keep uh, chugging along, doing those dishes, getting those dishes done. Another thing I have mentioned many times before, but it goes with the theme is cleaning out my refrigerator whenever I go grocery shopping my husband does that again of course you would do that but do we always think about it now you will so I again it's kind of a common sense thing but I wasn't doing it so a while ago before because we were waiting till we after we got the groceries the groceries would sit there then we'd clean it out and then one day my husband's like why don't we do this before we go grocery shopping and I was like yeah that's kind of a good idea I don't know why we're making this hard on ourselves when we're gonna have to clean them clean it anyway so because it's annoying enough putting away dishes I mean dishes um groceries you know it's it takes time and everything so You don't want to add cleaning or refrigerator on top of that. And then you're likely not to do it thoroughly because you're just trying to get the groceries in the refrigerator. So it's best to do it before you go on the grocery trip. And that way you also know what you have and what you don't have because you just clean stuff out and you don't forget stuff. And if you guys listened to my last episode, I talked about deep cleaning a different room of the house every day. Today, it's going to be the outer areas. So after I'm done with the episode today, spend an extra 30 minutes or so in your living area just finding stuff to clean and organize. If you don't have enough to do in your living area, just move on to a dining room or a place with a shelf or a kid's room. So something else you can do, I just heard my trash guy outside the trash truck is every time you take your garbage to the curb on trash day 
that could be a sign to uh, thoroughly, thoroughly mop your floors. Like not just Swiffer it or whatever, but thoroughly mop them. And that way every time it's trash day, okay, I got to take my trash to the curb, whatever, a couple times a week. I have to mop more than that because of my kids. But um, a lot of the time when I'm quote unquote mopping, I'm using my steam mop or something uh, just to do a quick once over. So whenever it's trash day, that's my sign to do a very thorough actual mop with a mop. And just keep working on those dishes. If you didn't have a bad dish day and you're already done and you want to move on to the next thing, just throw away trash, uh, put stuff away where it goes, put appliance, small appliances in cabinets, um, just clear the counter space as much as possible, and then do a thorough wipe down of the whole area, starting top to bottom, left to right, and let's get all of these uh, nooks and crannies wiped down. And while you guys are doing that, I talked about before i don't have a microwave right now but i do have an air fryer so while you're waiting for the microwave to beep or something you can either wipe down uh something you just wipe down something you wouldn't normally wipe down so every time you go to go heat something up you have like a minute two minutes whatever while you're waiting for it to beep just quickly wipe down one thing whether it be the refrigerator inside the refrigerator your cabinet something that some you don't do every single time or that gets skipped and doing these little things especially the doing the dishes and cleaning while you're cooking really helps me because once I've eaten something or after I've cooked a meal or heated up something or whatever the case may be I'm full I'm tired I don't really want to do this huge kitchen overhaul a lot of times and that's how I leave it messy whenever I do leave it messy so if I've done the bulk of it while my food was simmering or whatever then I don't have a huge mess to clean up after everyone's eaten it's going to be a lot smaller of a mess and I'm going to be a lot more likely to knock it out since this one's the opening shift and we are just doing a straighten and reset of the house. I'm going to go ahead and move on in a few minutes, but if you're still working on your kitchen, no worries. You can pause, rewind, or just clean as I'm talking and just finish your kitchen today. If all you get done is your kitchen or your dishes, that's completely fine and awesome as long as you get something done today. Um, and maybe you have a really congested, dirty kitchen right now that has been stressing you out. You're going to feel so much better and probably be motivated to clean some other stuff once you get it knocked out. So if you are just starting on your wipe down, go ahead and start on that. If you uh, have already been doing it, uh, do a spot sweep of your floor for the crumbs you threw on the floor so we're not tracking them to the other rooms of the house as we move on. But I'm going to go ahead and move to my living area and my husband went out of town yesterday so I kind of had a lazy evening last night. I was just tired because we'd been running errands all day. We dropped him off to go to the airport, all that good stuff. So me and the kids were kind of pooped. I wanted to watch a show didn't do laundry, bad Jessica, but usually I do do laundry when I watch a show, but I was just done yesterday and that's okay. Um, we want to create the habits by doing it as much and as often as possible, but if you have a cheat day where you don't do it, that's fine too. We all deserve relaxation. And I found my quote unquote opening shifts, my cleaning in the morning, like what we're doing right now. And you can listen to this at night, no problem. I just tend to, this is going to be a sh little bit of a shorter episode and I tend to just do my closing shifts a little bit longer. But I also like to, in, and just be picking up the living area as I talk, uh, put everything away where it goes. Just go from one end of the room, left to right, and just pick up or right to left, whatever you prefer. <laughs> just you know, put your shoes away, trash away, put stuff in the other rooms. Um, my kids were making tents in the living room, which is why it's a disaster. So it looks a lot worse than it is. It's mainly just blankets and big plastic tubs piled on top of each other everywhere because they were making these big tents. But anyway, just be picking up while I'm talking. But one of the big things that 
we do in our house that really helps is before we go to bed at night, um, I get the whole house involved, which I didn't used to. And, you know, kids, especially my kids age, they put stuff away in the wrong place. And sometimes we don't want to include them in cleaning because we want it done right. But if you take the time and teach them to pick up after themselves, at least it really does help even if when you're first teaching them, it just seems like an extra chore. Eventually, it, it does make things easier in the end. But I like to involve them too when I'm cleaning up the living area and stuff at night. And I should have had them do it last night too. We just got to bed a little bit later than usual and stuff like that. But I like to, you know, my husband will do, we just kind of just... I'll do a different area of the house. I'll get up and start cleaning. And a lot of times in a house with roommates, spouses, whatever the case may be in your household, um, if one person sees you cleaning right in front of them, they start doing it. And then if you're doing it every night, they're going to be like, okay, that's just what's done. Even if it is, like I said, a spouse, if my husband gets up and starts cleaning the the living area before bed, I get up and just start cleaning because I don't want him to do it by himself. And a lot of times that's how it is. And that's how the habit's created. You do that every night. One of, and if he forgets, I'm doing it. And then he does it because I'm doing it. And since now that we've established that habit, it just makes things a lot easier. Now my morning shifts are usually by myself because he's gone. Um, I'm in charge of the breakfast and all that. So in my house, I'm doing the morning resets on my own, but those are usually the lesser of the resets anyway. So if you're still picking up, if you have a disaster tent situation like I do, then keep working on that. If you're done with that or you are you want to move on to the next thing, I like to do a thorough clean on my couch. And today I want you guys to spend 30 minutes in your outer areas. That's going to be, I told you that's the bonus today is find some time today, whether it's while you're waiting for a load of laundry, watching a show. A lot of us have TVs in our living area, so that'll make it a little easier. Put on some music, another episode of the podcast or whatever uh, you want to do and just spend an extra 30 minutes somewhere in your living area, whether it's baseboards, um, ceiling fans, mirrors, uh, maybe you have a really cluttered coffee table or maybe you have a ottoman or a coffee table that opens up and you need to organize the inside of it, something like that. Just spend 30 minutes in your outer areas and that can include your dining room um, if you didn't get to that when we did the kitchen. So the couch, I like to take off the cushions and because I've got small kiddos that like to bring food in my living room, I always vacuum my couch because I'm trying to keep it nice and there's nothing worse than taking off your cushion or somebody looking for something in the couch and there's crumbs and nastiness. Um, my mom tells the story, I've told it before on the podcast, so this might be a repeat to the avid listeners on here but while you guys are cleaning your couch vacuuming it uh if you don't have a small vacuum or something on hand you can just brush the crumbs if there are any off onto the floor and then sweep them up or vacuum them up don't forget to clean underneath the couch as well and just get that nice and clean but anyway my great grandma was very clean when she was alive and stuff my mom always tells the story she took very great pride in her house. She was known as a person that always had a clean, kept a clean house, always had everything looking nice, all that good stuff. But I guess one time when her kids were little, I guess sat on the couch and somebody lost something. So the guest was like, oh, I'll help you look for it. And it was somebody that she kind of, my grandma kind of tried to impress, if you will. So she was like, oh no, it's fine because she knew she knew that she hadn't cleaned her couch in a while or whatever, and this girl was kind of judgy. So the girl was like, no, 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 I'll help you look for it. Stuck her hand in the couch cushion and pulled out a hot dog. And I guess my grandma was mortified and 
you know, of course, the lady thought it was funny and got a kick out of it because she thought my grandma was this perfect person and they were kind of competing with each other. But that just, that's probably the realest story I've heard. Um, I found apple cores underneath my couch, everything else, which is why I put that into my routine because of my kids, because of their age and because of the whores I have found underneath my couch before. Cleaning under my couch and under the cushions is something I include in an everyday thing because they also come off easily, my cushions, the bottom cushions especially, and I don't want the kids to be rough housing or whatever. A cushion pops halfway off and someone sees a bunch of cracker crumbs underneath my thing or just the fact that it's dirty and bugs will come and nobody wants food anywhere that's not supposed to be there, so all very good reasons. Once you're done cleaning the couch, let's go ahead and fix the pillows nice, fix your throw blankets. I love having good throw blankets in the living room that match the theme of the house. I might redecorate soon. Um, And by redecorate, I mean budget redecorate. But because I've had the same like blue and orange for a while, I took it out of my room finally because I'm like I'm a grown woman and this is pretty bright I do love bright colors don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with bright colors I had them for years but when you're looking at the same bright colors and you have orange and turquoise in your bedroom and your living area and that sounds really extreme if you saw my house it's just like the accent color (laughs) my bedroom was a little extreme but I got the stuff from Target and it was really pretty but very bright I just wanted it to kind of tone down a little bit and be a little more of a calming space. So I might change those colors to a little bit more muted. Maybe even the same colors, just a more muted uh, version of them, just so they're a little more calming. Sorry, I went off on a little rabbit trail there, there but just be finishing up your living the living area as I talk. But I guess the reason why I'm bringing up um, redecorating is because once if I find myself in a rut or a cleaning rut if you will I say if you will a lot um, th- if you guys do social media or anything you know that when you record yourself and you listen to yourself back you realize like all the stuff you say constantly like 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 I just did and I have a few phrases that I repeat 80,000 times Sorry if you didn't notice and I just pointed it out. Sorry if you did notice and I drive you nuts. If you can tell by my podcast, I get distracted really easily. I'll be talking about something. I'll be like, oh yeah, so anyway, that's how my mind is. And that's why I need the podcast to do the podcast because it helps keep my mind focused and on what to clean and stuff. Anyway, as I was saying, I like to redecorate whenever I'm kind of in a rut, cleaning rut, or I'm not as excited about my, maybe I'm cleaning fine, but I'm not as excited as my, of my house as I used to be. Uh, There's something about like getting new pillow covers or something that makes me want to clean the house because I want to see what it looks like all nice and clean with my new pillow covers, throw blankets, uh, coffee table, whatever the case may be. And while you guys are doing the finishing touches on your uh, entryway and living room, and don't forget to throw in those extra 30 minutes after the podcast um, in an area. But another thing that I do that tethers one uh, chore, one task, one habit to another habit is whenever my kids are put on an activity that is super occupying, they're not going to come nag me every five seconds like my daughter does these insane crafts. She's super creative, uh, but (laughs) could they be a little messy? Yes, but she is, she's always creating stuff. So she makes these dummy dolls, uh, out of her own clothes. She'll stuff her clothes with stuff. And I just have a rule that she puts everything back and folds it and puts it back when she's done. Does she always do that? No, but I try to make it a rule. But anyway, she stuffs her clothes to make like a person that's her sized. And it's really freaky because I'll find it just sitting on the chair and it'll scare the daylights out of me. But she'll make 
a face out of paper and she started attaching my extensions <laughs> to the doll to make it even more realistic so it's got this these weird human hair extensions and it's lifelike but stuff like that she gets really just caught up in making these little weird doll things that's really cute and creative and scary and uh or the other day I was doing something in the bedroom and I came out to check on her and I have this pink velour sweater that I just wear around the house it's a little bit loud so she loves that sweater of course because she's a little girl but she wrapped it around her legs and used an entire roll of tape I heard her with the tape and I she was like I'm just doing a project she had made a mermaid tail and taped the whole jacket on her legs like with a whole roll of tape it's hard to explain but she used a whole roll to wrap around her legs to make a mermaid tail and the little bottom fin was attached to her toes so every time she wiggled her toes they'd move and then she was kind of embarrassed when <laughs> when I came out and she had put these little uh paper a paper bra on her chichis. <laughs> And then I came out and I was like, what's going on? And she got embarrassed and then her little paper bra came off and she was like, mom, stop. Because I was grinning ear to ear because I thought it was so cute. And she was like, stop, I'm not done yet. But anyway, the point being, I just thought that was a funny, She her projects are insane. But when they're stuck on a project like that, and usually her sister will be helping her with that. I'll be like, you guys do arts and crafts in the room. Uh, she will be busy and it's not often that they are busy. So when they're on an activity that takes a lot of time, I do a chore, something that I've been meaning on meaning to do. And it helps if at the beginning of the day, you think of the chore that needs to be done. Like I need to organize my cabinet today. I need to organize my closet today. I need to spend extra time cleaning the hallway bathroom today. Something like that. You figure out what that bonus chore is going to be when you wake up. Um, it could be what I'm talking about in the podcast, doing extra work in your living area. So, okay, today when I'm doing my extra 30 minutes in my living area, I am going to do that whenever I put them on a project and they're occupied. Or like how they were making tents. Um, I could clean the other room that they're not in and just tell them, you can't bring anything out here, just make your tent and play in your tent, that's it. And then while they're building the tent, you go in the other room, do your bonus chore. Those, that's just something for those of you that do have children. And I would post a, I would post a picture of her little outfit or whatever, but uh, like I said, she made these insanely small um, aerial bra thing, shell bra so she's not wearing a top. Maybe I can just crop it and show you the tail. It's pretty funny. But last thing I want you guys to do is to straighten up your bathroom. So just throw away any trash. If your trash needs to be taken out and relined, go ahead and do that. And I forgot to mention that in the kitchen. So if you haven't done that, you could do that too while you're taking out the bathroom trash. And then just kind of put everything away that you used to get ready if you hadn't already. Wipe down um, after you brush. And that's tethering things to other habits too. I talk about this one all the time, but we take showers every day, right? So when you're in the shower, um, squeegee your glass. Keep it close by, ready to go. So when you're in the shower, you could just do it real quick. I keep a scrub brush in my shower too and give it a little once over after I take showers. That keeps it just maintained. So when I do my big uh, deep clean of my bathrooms, whenever I do them, I just have to bleach stuff and it's not a big nasty ordeal. And it just makes it a little easier to clean. Uh, same thing with toilet. You know, give it a little once over with the brush after you use the restroom um, to maintain it. Uh, wipe down the mirrors after you brush your teeth or your kids brush their teeth. Things like that, just tying them to different things. After you get out of the shower and you're putting your towel up, um, maybe use that when you get out of the shower to take any dirty laundry that's in a laundry basket near or around your 
bathroom and bring it to the laundry room to be washed. So we're nearing the end of this episode. Do not forget to change your loads of laundry when they are done and fold those and put them away. Start a new load. Um, If you have to do more laundry today, I always have to do like a couple loads a day. It sounds like a lot, but we have a lot of laundry in the house. And then it's a little less now that they're not in school, but still a lot. And then don't forget to do a very thorough uh, sweep and mop of every room of the house and or vacuum if you have carpeting and get those floors clean um i like to do the floors while i listen to music that's why i do it at the end of the episode and just remind you guys because vacuums and stuff can be loud um but if you want to listen to a podcast while you do that that's fine too just pick an next another episode and get those floors clean Uh, Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you got a lot done today. I hope your morning reset went well. And as always, happy cleaning, guys.